Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints, a book written by Deneen Ackers. Join Eleanor Arthur and their mother Elizabeth and I as we read stories of these remarkable saints on our traveling tour through the West Lawn of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Seattle, Washington. First, Mr. Rogers, a Presbyterian minister and television host of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The Reverend Broderick Greer, Episcopal Priest. Gustavo Gutierrez, serving the most vulnerable in Peru. Madia Lin, a founder and director of an LGBTQ and women-centered mosque in Chicago. It's Juma, the Friday prayer service that Muslims attend each week. Madia Lin is sitting in a circle with a group of other members of the mosque that she co-founded in Chicago. Who would like to lead prayer this week? Madia asks. A mother with an infant in her arms volunteers to lead the gathered community in prayer. Madia smiles as she follows along with the prayer. She loves seeing the different community members take turns leading them. Last week, a transgender teenager led prayers. Next week, someone else will lead. Whoever leads prayers according to the type of Islam they practice. Madia herself is Shia Muslim. Her co-founder of this mosque is a Sufi woman. They don't pretend that they are all the same when it comes to their faith, and letting each person who leads Juma do so according to their own tradition is one way that they celebrate differences. Madia has been working to create a world that is more fair and safe for everyone. People who work for the rights of groups of people at the community level are called organizers, and Madia has been an organizer since she was in high school. I think it's in my blood, Madia says. I grew up with union families in Detroit, and I spent a lot of time in labor union halls as a kid. When she was in high school, Madia sensed that she was a bit different from most of her classmates, and she came out as transgender when she was 18. She began working for the rights of LGBTQ people in her high school and later with Muslim faith when she converted to Islam in her early 20s. I was trying to find meaning in the world and my place in it, especially being different. Islam spoke to me. The words of the Quran spoke to me, Madia says. I now think that I was always Muslim in my understanding of how the world works, but I didn't know that I really was until I started studying and found the truth of Islam really spoke to me. Madia has been working for the rights of LGBTQ people for decades, and this mosque came about in 2016 when many Muslims and LGBTQ people especially felt unsafe and unwelcome. Madia knew that she had to do something to help. The mosque began as a spiritual community that practices radical inclusion. The mosque welcomes all people, especially those who have often been excluded in other places. I prayed beside a bunch of people, women, trans, and queer people, who couldn't have imagined being in a mosque, let alone leading prayer. It is constantly a wonderful and intense experience, Nadia says. It's nothing short of a blessing. An important part of including everyone at the mosque is making sure that the services and community are accessible to disabled people. This means everything from making sure the public transit stops where they meet are wheelchair accessible to making all services available online for those who cannot travel, to making the leadership model shared that so that no person runs everything. Badia herself is disabled and that sometimes means she's in the hospital or home in bed, unable to come into the office. The community was designed so that other people can step up when it is needed. That helps everyone truly be part of the shared leadership of the community. It also helps model that people have value because of who they are, not because of anything that they do. We have so much wisdom in our community because we lift up the experiences of disabled Muslims, Madia says. We disrupt the idea that you have to always be working, always be making something to have value. The value of honoring every person for who they are extends to one of the programs of the mosque that Madia is most proud of. The care packages they send out every month for LGBTQ Muslims who are in prison. In 2017, Maria began a pen pal program for LGBTQ Muslims in prison who had almost no spiritual support and often treated unfairly by the prison system simply for who they are. She wanted them to realize that they were not forgotten and that they matter too. 
The program has grown, and now the volunteers in the mosque send a new letter several times a year to hundreds of individuals in prisons, detention centers, and other institutions. They also send care packages with items like prayer rugs, Qurans, and other religious reading materials. Madia and the others at the mosque think of these siblings in faith as part of their community. Every day that they have prayers, the person leading prayer on the exact same prayer rug that they send to the LGBTQ Muslims in prayer so that they feel like they belong and have a spiritual home. For Madia, helping people and trying to make the world a better place is just part of who she is. I cannot see people suffer and not help. It's a calling. Every day is just a question of how I shall answer that calling. What might your calling be? St. Francis of Assisi, a Christian saint who loved all animals. Bayard Rustin, a civil rights leader. Rabbi Danya Rutenberg, a feminist author and social activist. Wangaria Mathai, a Kenyan environmentalist and social activist who changed the lives of many women. Thank you for joining us today. You can come and see all of these saints at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Seattle, Washington on our West Lawn. We hope you enjoyed this children's book tour and you can continue to read about all of these saints on our lawn, but also in the book, Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints. Have a great week and we'll see you next week for Children's Chapel.